Welcome back to Team O'Neill. I'm Wyatt. What we're going to talk about today are limited slip differentials, one way, one and a half way, and two way mechanical, you know, plate style limited slip diffs, because that's by far the most common thing that you're going to find in motorsport. From a driver's point of view, it's critically important to get the right diff, but then also to set that diff up for your vehicle and your intended purpose. So we'll take a look at the basics of diff setup, you know, clutches and ramp angles and that sort of thing, because if you get, you know, theoretically the same differential and put it in five different vehicles, it's going to behave five different ways. So this is kind of just a basic universal guide, you know, whether you're in a front wheel drive, a rear wheel drive, or an all wheel drive, whether you're autocross or drifting or rallying or whatever you might be doing out there. At first, it looks like black magic, but it's really, really easy. So let's dive right into it. We'll take a look at you know, how to select the right diff and then adjusting the diff so that it works for you. All right, so we're gonna take this at kind of an intermediate level. If you're curious about how a differential really works, there are some great kind of animations and visualizations uh, right here on YouTube that you can find that'll do a much better job than I ever could, even if I, you know, cut one in half or something like that. Uh, we all know open differentials and how they work. Uh, most people are probably going to agree they're fairly terrible for motorsport use. So what's the deal with one, one and a half and two way limited slip differentials? A one way limited slip is only going to have any locking effect when you're on throttle. When it's under acceleration load, that's going to start to lock up. So that one way diff only locks under acceleration, but not under decel. A one and a half way diff will lock under acceleration and a bit under decel. And then a true two way diff would have the same ramp angles, top and bottom, and would lock basically equally under the same acceleration loads and engine braking. When you're looking at the ramp angles on a diff, and I just touched on it a little bit, but essentially the steeper the ramp angle is, the easier that those are gonna get pushed out and lock the diff up. And the shallower those ramp angles are, the harder it is uh, to push those clutches out and lock the differential. That is of course dependent on horsepower and how much traction you have available at the road. Uh, a low horsepower car, you'd want to run a steeper diff angle because you have less power essentially uh, to push those plates out and get that diff to lock. So a low horsepower car, you have a steeper diff angle uh, where with a higher horsepower car, that's gonna lock up much too fast. So you'd want a more shallow ramp angle there because you're applying a lot more force to it. Going back to the idea of available grip on the road as well, if you're on snow, you would probably want a steeper diff angle so that those tires will lock up a little bit easier versus if you were on pavement, you're using all that car's available power. There's a lot more torque going through there, so you could probably get away with a much shallower uh, diff ramp angle. So it's really just a game of matching your horsepower and how much grip you've got, plus also the style of driving you're looking to do. A lot of teams try and match kind of the throttle position to the amount of diff lock so that as you're off the gas, obviously it's open. As you go 10, 20, 30% throttle, that diff starts to take some load and increase it all the way up so that eventually at, you know, 100% throttle, that diff is pretty well locked. Of course, if you're autocrossing, you might never want that diff to fully lock. Uh, if you're drifting, you might want that diff to lock by the time you're half throttle, you want that already kicking in. So that's where the clutches come into play. You've got the ramp angle, which is gonna start pushing out, but then the amount of clutches on either side is going to dictate how much the diff actually locks. If you stack those clutches up, you can get a diff to lock completely. Uh, and if you're not running that many, that diff's never gonna fully ever lock at all. And this is just a feel thing as you drive the car, see what you've got going on. It really depends what kind of vehicle you're in. You know, a rear wheel drive car that again, you're going drifting, you want those tires to lock up kind of hard and quickly. You're gonna use a decent amount of clutches on either side and a pretty quick ramp angle. Versus if you were like autocrossing a front wheel drive car, you might never want that diff to lock up completely. So you'd run fewer clutches and a shallower ramp angle. 
Another important thing to keep in mind with those clutches is that they are wear items. You know, it's gonna behave differently fresh out of the box than it is six months down the road, a year, two years down the road. If you buy a used one off of eBay that came out of somebody's rally car, a drift car or something like that, it's not gonna lock up as easily as it would when it was fresh out of the box just because those clutches have all worn down and there's more play there. As long as you can still get parts for that diff, you should be fine. Again, just add another clutch or two in there. Depending on the manufacturer, there are shims, there are other ways of doing it. You can change the fluid, but just know that wear is definitely an issue over time. Again, it's really driver preference. Uh, certainly in an ideal world, you'd have the opportunity to drive with a one-way and a one-and-a-half-way and a, a two-way on all different surfaces and a front-wheel drive and a rear-wheel drive and whatever. Um, not everybody has that chance. So do your due diligence and just kind of do your homework going into this. As you get involved with different kinds of racing, what you're probably going to find is most people are really friendly. Uh, and if you do approach someone who's doing well, ask the guy who's beating you, ask the guy who's beating him, you know, what kind of differential are you running? Most of the time they'll tell you uh, because there are so many other settings in the car once you get into suspension and alignments and tire and wheel sizes and all of this stuff that uh, diff kind of ramp angles and that kind of stuff is often overlooked, but it is critically important. So hopefully that shines a little light on kind of a seldom talked about topic. We'll throw a few really handy links in the description of this video uh, that might help you sort of narrow down your path to finding the proper differential for your vehicle and your application. If you've got any questions about this or anything else, please add them in the comment section. If you're into these kinds of videos and kind of motorsports related stuff, take a look at our channel and please consider subscribing. If you'd like to drive someone else's car at the limit with some professional instruction, please check out teamoneal.com. Until then, have fun, be safe, and we'll catch you next time.